The synthetic biology breakthrough that fostered the crisis was discovered all the way back in the 2020s. It wasn't the technology as much as the 2047 lab leak and the rapid integration with nature in a vulnerable part of the world that caused Earth's ecology to take a nosedive. The synthetic compounds reacted adversely with photosynthesis and affected drinking water. However, it was the second lab leak from the Floridian Mars lab in 2067 that accelerated things. The impact of both leaks were initially subtle and almost untraceable. After a long incubation period, Earth succumbed to human-created synthetic compounds only after failed attempts to decontaminate and isolate the problem regionally. The synthetic biology breakthroughs in the late 2000s and early 2020s fostered the mRNA vaccine platform, which led to the first COVID-19 vaccines and subsequently to vaccines for most diseases known to humanity. Each game changers for the billions of people in the global south, whose habitat by 2055 was ravaged by uncontrolled climate change. In 2059, SynBio was used to sense and biologically delay heart failure by decades. By the 2060s, most forms of cancer had an immunotherapy-based vaccine too, and synthetic biology was a game changer for bio-based climate change mitigation. However, SynBio also increased the risks for an accident or mistakes exponentially. As SynBio became a generally available platform, the control with its usage dwindled. This became especially risky in industrial use cases, such as the new biomaterials, or indeed for any use case across Asia, where SciTech expertise was highly dispersed across labs without regulatory oversight. Shockingly, the most serious lab leak came from a Biosafety Level 4 or BSL-4 lab at a Swiss university. A major leak of an experimental SynBio-based photosynthesis inhibitor in 2037. The compound escaped into the Swiss Alps, starving trees and plants, and even creating health issues for animals and young children. A bio-based vaccine was found, but distributing it across nature proved difficult. By 2043, the manned mission to Mars took place with biological samples being brought back to Earth to the tune of thousands of pounds by the end of that decade. The 2067 leak from NASA's Mars Mission Biolab in Florida did not help either, because previously unknown biological properties, possibly of fungal nature, dubbed the Martian rust, started to spread in the regional ecosystem, affecting wildlife and rivers, and making it impossible to decontaminate drinking water locally. Scientists had known that lab-enhanced escaped microbes might alter habitats, food webs, or biodiversity, but not how insidiously slow and undetectable the changes would be and how they would magnify over time. The additional challenge was that the leaked bacteria was a gain-of-function synbio-enhanced version of the bacteria developed to test future risks and evolved in nature. By 2075, Earth's ecosystem across most relevant classifications of natural biodiversity had been contaminated either by lab-created synthetic compounds or the enhanced marsh rust. It became impossible to distinguish between natural and synthetically created because the two were either identical or the lineage impossible or too costly to trace. At first, the implications were not so severe. However, as time progressed, subtle signs started to appear. Bleaching of trees, wildlife with deformations, and a significant proportion of children with unexplained syndromes all across Central Europe, from allergies to seizures and rare and treatable cancers. A public health crisis of unprecedented proportion. The fascination with bioinnovation had outgunned biorisk. Overall, the driving forces that caused the scenario synthetic biology unleashed in the wild wasn't so much symbio advances or spaceflight itself, as it was the panic and the attempted efforts to stem the tide, the failed intergovernmental containment efforts, especially the crackdown on regular and productive synthetic biology research that might have been able to innovate the world out of the problems that were starting to surface.